And hello and welcome to Got Clutter, Get Organized, the conversation. I'm excited. And you know why I'm excited? I'm always excited when I have a friend and a fellow businesswoman as my guest. I have Shantae Copeland of Copeland Consulting, LLC. And we're going to be talking about how to empower ourselves financially. So Shantae, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I am so proud of you and everything that you're doing. And I am just happy to have this outlet to help people get their finances in order. So before we talk about empowering the people, how did you become like the financial coach, the financial guru? What's your journey? Well, I was broke. (laughs) That was the beginning stages of it. Um, I then developed health issues early on in my marriage and I, being the CFO of my home, I had to learn how to help my husband financially without being able to work. So I started looking into, we had a mortgage, we had car payments, we had credit card debt, we had student loan debt. We had a lot of different uh, things that were financially burdening us and I couldn't work. So think about that for a second. Put yourself there for a hot second. First, I panicked. Then I prayed. And then I said, you know what? Now what do I do? So then I started attacking our own finances. Before I knew it, I had paid off our mortgage. I had paid off car payments. I had paid down credit card debt. And the total, I did the numbers last night because I never really looked at my own numbers and said, how much was that? It was over $300,000 worth of debt on one salary and six people to feed. So I said, you know, what worked? I started developing strategies. I started helping my friends, first of all, and seeing, okay, they were like, how are you doing this? I helped them get their credit cards in order, how to leverage credit, what kind of credit to get. Credit is not bad. It's how we misuse it. Then I paid the mortgage off. And then I was like, well, what do we do now that we don't have this huge chunk? So then I said, let me work on investing. We bought rental properties. We did little different little things. And then I had, like I said, these four babies coming along, all wanting to go to college. And I said, what do I do with that? I didn't want to be in total debt again. And I didn't want them because I'm learning as a financial coach, 40s and 50-year-olds are still dealing with 20-year-old college debt, their 20-year-old self. So I try, I had to just, just devise plans and strategies on how to do that and help them along the way. So I do a lot of little things like teaching them, push scholarships to your children, push bartering to your children, push group economics in their family. That's a big one for us. So If when one was away at college, the three that were home, okay, you get a part-time job, you get a part-time job. They all wanted to work. Everybody sent her money, not just us. Then she got out. Then the the other next one went. So it just kept progressing in that level. Wow. And I just couldn't believe that we were able to do that again, one salary. Mm Mm-hmm. And it was just strategies, just systems and and being dedicated. It was like, Mm -hmm. okay, one day we woke up and had $40 for a week worth of groceries for six people, four of them athletes. Mm. How did that happen? Grace of God and planning. We had a lot of rice and beans, (laughs) but we were able to focus and buckle down on that budget. Mm. That's a big thing. Budget. Mm. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So then I started realizing that it worked. And Mm -hmm. I said, why can't I teach this to other people? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it went from my friends to my church, to my social groups I was in, to my, then I said, okay, nonprofits that I volunteered at needed help. I started teaching them how to do fundraising and how to run money and manage money and taxes. And it just kept snowballing. So now that's how I ended up here. Just by doing. Wow. You are an inspiration, a true inspiration. So, Shantae, yeah. as we slowly get closer to the holiday season, the one word that people keep every year 
I always overspend. I always just like go over budget. What are some of the things that we do that we really should not be doing when it specifically comes to the holiday season, but also to really kind of help us get ready for a new year that's coming as well? First thing and only thing I say is plan, budget, and prepare. The worst thing that the statistics are, America spends eight hundred million dollars, billion dollars. I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah, in holidays between birthdays, Christmas, anniversaries, all that combined, eight hundred and ninety mil billion dollars a year. Trying to be happy, <laughs> the gift give. And it's not a big, it's not a bad thing. Gifts are wonderful. We make them feel good. We feel wonderful. We feel appreciated and thought about. So it's not a bad thing. It's how we go about it. First thing I want to tell you is do not use plastic to fund Christmas. I'm going to specifically talk about Christmas. And I know people say, well, how else am I going to afford it? Plan, organize, prepare. I buy Christmas gifts all year long. I see things. I know, know your people. That's one. Know who you're buying for. Don't just buy anything that you want them to have. Get them what they want. And to do that, you have to know them. I set a budget. And since I've began my family, kids always got the most of it. So if I say I'm going to round it up, $2,000. I know. A thousand of it's going to the kids. So I get, I look at what their interests are at the time because we know it's fickle with a kid. It changes. So I then go, okay, you like Ninja Turtles this week and you like Pretty Little Pony this week. So I look for those things on sale. I find who works at department stores that I know. Hey, can I get your discount? It's, it's a barter, give and take. And for the exchange for that, I will say, hey, I'll pick up your dry cleaning if you give me your discount. I've always been that way. We were military when we first got married, and that's all we had. We had no money. So it was like, okay, you do something for me, I do something for you. What do you know how to do? So I then start just preparing those gifts. The other thing is I start a spreadsheet. At the very beginning of my process, it will enlist who, who they are, what they want, where can I find it, and how much is it going to cost me? And on that spreadsheet, I fill it out. After I find their gift, I then list it. Now, because I'm going ahead of time and season, you have to find somewhere to hide them. Because, you know, these kids are, are, are... My one daughter, one year, she she unwrapped her gifts and wrapped it back. I didn't mm. even realize she found her gifts. So wow. I, I'm real good at, at hiding things. But I have to keep track of where I hide them. I'm still human. So on the spreadsheet, I put where the gifts are stored. The worst thing is finding that, that Christmas gift in July <laughs> that you forgot that you, you hid somewhere. So after I get that part and I keep that list with my... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It looks like your sale. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I keep, I live by my planner. I don't, um, I don't think about what should go on it. I just put everything on it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's another tip for, for you to keep organized and keep on top of your money. My bill paying is on my planner mm -hmm. the day it's due. Um, and usually I put a couple days before just in case that online payment takes Days to process, mm -hmm. it's not late. Because mm -hmm. that's another downfall. We lose track of our finances because how did I pay $40 and only 10 went to the bank, the, the bill? Mm -hmm. Because the other 30 went to the late fee. It happens. It's a never-ending cycle. So you must be prepared. You mm -hmm. must plan ahead and think about every step of your journey as far as your money. Any dollar that comes in has to have an assignment. Mm -hmm. I don't leave any money on the table. If there's money extra, I panic. Like, what did I do not do? Because <laughs> mm -hmm. this was accounted for. 
Wow. Shanta, so, you just so gave yeah. you gave so many tips and nuggets, and I was writing them down, and I hope you were too. And if you weren't, you'll just have oh, to listen good. to it again. But you know, so many things you said specifically about, you know, like knowing what people really want, but also looking at your budget. Because I remember one year a friend, she wasn't working, but she still wanted to give gifts. She baked something for everyone and everybody yes. appreciated it. So a lot of times, like you said, you just have to really look at where you are and what you can do. And I like the fact that you said really just planning and budgeting things. And I was having a conversation with a friend. I said, and I, you know, because we're about the same age, I said, do you remember the Christmas club accounts? I used to enjoy yes. those because that really helped you. Like you, like you were saying, it helped you plan and you knew which, how much money you had to spend. And I also liked your idea of just kind of really knowing the person, because if you know the person and you could shop in July for right. a Christmas present. And it'd be the perfect gift. And it'll be the perfect, perfect gift. And just so you know, I still have my Christmas club. Really? $40 goes in every time, every every two weeks on schedule. And when it comes and gets deposited, I go, Christmas! <laughs> <laughs> I just let it roll because if you don't stop it, it just continues. And that is so true. And that is so true. So, Shante, as we, you know, you've given a lot of strategies for us in regards to the holidays. Can you give us maybe one or two to help us? Okay, so we've got our budget because I'm hoping you heard that people plan and budget so you don't have budget. to overspend. Over <laughs> how we can kind of get a little maybe jump start into the new year with a couple of habits on how we can even maybe just kind of pre-plan either for next year or just really to empower ourselves because you've accomplished a lot. And I think a lot of people don't understand you can pay your mortgage off. You can send yes. your children to college debt free because I actually know people who were in their 60s and 70s and still trying to figure out that student loan thing. So if you could just yeah. give us a couple and it, of it's not. And I want people to understand money is very, very complicated and easy at the same time. Mm -hmm. Do not think because you haven't figured it out at 40, 50, or even 60 that you'll never figure it out. You just have to adopt new systems, new habits. Because if you told me when I was sick and couldn't work that I would have no mortgage, I would have told you you were crazy. And this was, this was, we're almost 15 years after that. This is not just now, yesterday. This is years and years now that I didn't have a mortgage. And it's just, it, it's so amazing to me that discipline can change everything. So the tip I want to give first is create a sinking fund. If you don't know what a sinking fund, a sinking fund is a money where you just sink money into it. It has no purpose. It has no deadline. It has no real end at this point. But just begin doing it. Set a set amount, contact your bank, and have an automatic withdrawal from your account every month at the same time. Then write it in your planner so that you remember, where did my money go? You, Because you don't want to freak out and see your statement and see this deposit you forgot about. Let it just sit there. Treat it like the electric bill. You can't call them back and get it. So why are you bothering this money? That was that one lady told me this. One of my, my first mentors told me that. She said, can you go back and get the cable bill money? Why are you touching that sinking fund? And she would slap my hand and tell me to stop touching it. Because you know it's there. You'll spend it. Treat it like a bill you can't get back. It's a mind trick. Until you get into the habit, it, it'll become, once you start seeing that number grow, take a look at it every now and then. Just don't touch it. Don't take it out. And then dream with it. After you have gotten it to build and become this nest egg, this sinking fund, now you have a little money to play. If you want to invest it, learn before you do that or contact someone who knows. Um, invest in what you already use. That's the other thing. I'm not investing in space suits. I don't wear one of those, but I do wear this suit. So who makes this suit? Start where you are. 
Don't don't try to reinvent the wheel. Why would you buy gain detergent stock and you use Tide? Something simple as that. Use, buy, and invest in what you already use. If nobody's using it, you are. Why would you not invest in what you're already using? Second, once that sinking fund becomes an egg with and then a hatched bird and wings, let it fly. Find what you really want to do, what you really... You've always wanted to learn investing. Okay, learn investing and then invest it. You want to be a landlord, buy a home, buy whatever that thing is, but everything takes money. So you have to manage that part first. You have to learn how that works first. Mm-hmm. Wow. So you just keep dropping wisdom nuggets, Shantae. <laughs> but you know, the one I'm thing sorry. the one thing that you said that I really, it kind of clicked with me is in regards to investing in what you use. Because one day I was just listening, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes I watch these um, videos and he said that. And then I just sat around my office. I said, now, wait a minute. You're HP. You're yep. HP. And you're yep. HP. <laughs> why are you buying Apple stock? I mean, yeah. it's a great investment, but why are you buying what you're not using? And that is so true. That is so true. So I definitely, oh my goodness, that was that was one thing. Because two things come from that. You trust it mm-hmm. and you know it. Yeah. That's yeah. where I want my money to go in what I trust and what I know. Mm-hmm. Everything mm-hmm. else doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. That is so true. So, Shantae, in all that you do, because you're a wife, you're a mother, you're a businesswoman, you're a mentor, you're always, you know, giving your time and your talent to different organizations in a community. How do you stay organized? Whew. I'm going to show you. <laughs> a paper planner. Yes, I know. Look, hey, hey, hey. Thanks, <laughs> me too. <laughs> And it's called, I have sections as well as mm-hmm. not, it's not just a planner. Mm-hmm. In there, I have a, a dump, a dump site. Okay. A dump site is okay. everything that comes into my mind that I can't do right this second, but I don't want to lose. Mm-hmm. There's a section in there for that. Then I have an idea. There are two different things. An idea is something I've already took off the dump list and created a plan for. Mm-hmm. Then. I put in a motivational section. I find out who's doing that idea and I follow them and I mm-hmm. trend and I see what they're doing mm-hmm. just to get the information. Mm-hmm. So I keep that information. Mm-hmm. Then I put a plan section. Now that I've gotten all of those things in place, I put a daily list. Today I read about, today I did about, today I talked to, today I called. Today I managed. Today I went and visited. And that's in the last section of my planner. Mm-hmm. And I check that at the end of the day. Just that section. That two two things. It shows my progress mm-hmm. and it shows my plan. Mm-hmm. 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 So I know, okay, tomorrow I got to do something else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've already wow. done A and B. Now mm-hmm. C comes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. So that's it. I, I have to have a paper wow. planner. And then I do the Google calendars mm-hmm, and Calendly mm-hmm, and all mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. because that sends me the reminders to my phone, which mm-hmm. is always in my hand, mm-hmm. like everybody else. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. We live by these phones. Yes, we do. So it, if I have something saying, hey, did you call Janet? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I did. And it, dung, it, 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 it dinged at two o'clock. I did. <laughs> so that kind of helps me with my assistant in my pocket. Mm-hmm. Shantae, yeah. this has been an awesome conversation, and I do hope that you can return in the future and we can continue talking I will about be here anytime you finances. Ask <laughs> Thank you. So how can people connect with you specifically if they really want you to be their financial coach? And I would strongly suggest that you hire Shantae to be your financial coach. I mean, she's, you know, mortgage paid off, credit cards paid off, co- kids sent to college. You need to talk to her. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, you can call me definitely directly at 570-517-1265. Or you can email me at scopeland at copelandconsulting.org. And see me at church in the street. Anytime you see me, just talk. <laughs> 
You, but I would love to to work with everyone. My goal, my vision, my big vision for the world, for my world, is everyone be free. The biggest stressor in our lives is money. And it's not just figures and money. It's emotional. We we need to delve into why we have poor money habits. What started them? Where they start? How can we turn them off? How can we change the narrative of that? that system that we've that hasn't been working so if i can get you to think another way and as long as there's different people there's different ways what works for you may not work for me but if it all leads us to debt free and 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 healthy money habits it's going to be worth it mm. Mm, yes, yes, and yes. And of course, those watching and listening, I will make sure to have Shantae's email, her phone number, as well as her website so that you can connect with her directly and reach out to her because we can all use a financial coach. Shantae, thank you so much again for your time. Oh, thank you for having me, Janet. I am so, like, again, so proud of what you do. And please, Everyone listen to her things. I've changed my whole office just working on her organizational skills. It's just been amazing. I didn't realize I didn't need this stuff. <laughs> Tossing Tuesday is my favorite day. Thank you, Shante. Thank you for having me.